Yo, what's up, Blackest fam? I hope all is well in your corner of the world. Uh, man, I got uh, got a new one here. I uh, got to get back into some Black Thought. I love Black Thought, the roots ever since. Uh, well, Black Thought's been around for a while. Most people only know his uh, commercial success, right? His Some of his stuff with the roots, his Jimmy Fallon show, late night stuff. It's, uh, he got a lot of hype, a lot of publicity after that. Uh, like 10 minute freestyle. I think we have a breakdown of that here on his channel. Um, but yo, he always brings it. Uh, you know, they, they give you a taste of what real hip hop was like a while back. Uh, it's been a while since we've done some black thoughts. So this is Aquamarine uh, with Danger Mouse. And I uh, want to get into it, see if we can give it a breakdown and reaction. And uh, man, uh, Black Thought just never disappoints. Uh, and we got a lyric video here as well. Hopefully it's good. And uh, let's get right into it. Aquamarine. All right. Enemies all around. We go from Libra to Libra from cold water. That old school right into it. He also has that voice, right? He just his flow is just so sick, man. But part of that is his voice, and, but he's also extremely intellectual as well. Anytime someone's really intellectual and in hip hop, I feel they stand out. Uh, just their references and such, but uh, it, let's get into it. We go from Libra to Libra, from cold water to fever, to World War Three from the treaty side to Geneva, the biology... Okay, he's talking about, so far it looks like he's going into opposites, right? He said, from Lyra to Libra... Alira is the name of, uh, I guess it could really be several, it's, it's a form of currency, right? Um, it's a current, I believe the current form of currency in Turkey, um, but it's also the name of the uh, currency in like uh, Lebanon, Syria, um, and including former currency, right? Uh, Italy, uh, Israel, I believe used the, the lira. Uh, Libra, wasn't that Facebook's attempt at crypto, <laughs> right? Uh, they, they did it, it was sometime during the pandemic. Um, but it was supposed to be this like low fee, um, you know, blockchain, uh, blockchain based uh, digital currency. I don't know if it was specific for marketplace, but it was definitely backed by Facebook or created by Facebook. Uh, so he's showing the change right from this uh, early simple type of currency uh, going to cryptocurrency, but also going from cold water to fever, right? A fever when you have a really high temperature. Um, a, what does he say? To World War Three, from the from the treaty uh, assigned in uh, signed in Geneva. Now he could be talking about a few different things there, but in 1864, um, it was the, the the first Geneva Convention, right? Um, and they have that the the treaty that was actually signed there. Um, it. it it's a uh, it's based on uh, with international law uh, for victims during armed conflict is really the kind of basis of it, um, and it's just really interesting that this is a time where we're looking at uh, you know China's uh, Chinese spy balloons being shot down. Of course, we have the conflict with Ukraine uh, and Russia, right? Uh, we have North Korea. Um, you know, we have uh, different uh, entities trying to look into. Uh, nuclear weapons so again we're showing the uh, how much things have changed right lira to libra is the same going cold water to fever world war three when the treaty signed in geneva um what does it say here the biology teacher said we used to be amoebas what does it say the neighborhood preacher said we emerged from the ether wow so yeah he's talking about not just a difference of opinion, but it's, it looks like opposites. Lira to Libra from cold water to fever to World War Three from the treaty signed in Geneva. The biology teacher said we used to be amoebas. The neighborhood preacher said we emerged from the ether. We completely 
Mm. That's sick. Now, I don't know, you know, I'm not the best with when it comes to science, but I don't know if most science teachers would agree with that. Um, the amoeba, it, it's already a complex single cell organism, right? So, yeah, we could say we share a common ancestor with the amoeba, but I don't I don't know if the science entirely backs that um what does he say here that we that we came from amoebas. I'm I'm, I'm not sure if that's uh, uh if that's it. Ether is a little bit different. Um, well, uh, the ancient Greeks, they saw ether as like a godlike element, right? Um, it's a substance that allowed humans to connect to intuition and spirituality. Um, so it, it, it's something that, um, you know, like Aristotle, Ar Aristotle used to say that um, ether is the fifth element, right? It's the spirit or the soul for the spiritual force. There's air, fire, earth, uh, and water. That's where it comes from. Um, I believe he, uh, Aristotle used to say, he used to go as far as saying ether is a, a personification of the upper air, God's breath, right? Um, so that's uh, just kind of some background into that. We used to be amoebas, the neighborhood preacher said we emerged, emerged from, from the ether. From the reefer and struck gold, Eureka, the more <laughs> Like how we came to be, right? We converged from uh, urethra, right? The, the, that's the, the urine duck, the duck by which uh, urine comes out. Uh, and, and, and guys also semen, right? I guess girls can have a, eh, but in men, semen. And struck gold, Eureka, right? We have life. Amoeba. The biology teacher said we used to be amoebas. The neighborhood preacher said we emerged from the ether. We converged from the reefer and struck gold. Eureka, the morning star Tariq. I was born to be a teacher. Mm. Uh, in Arabic, his name, uh, his name, real name is Tariq Trotter, right? Uh, Tariq means morning star. Or most people would translate it as morning star. Yo, man, I love his references, right? He talks about uh, the scorpion and the frog. Now, that's a really interesting story. It's about people will be uh, who they're meant to be, right? Or... Um, the story goes that a, a scorpion goes up to a frog and he asks the frog to carry him across the river. And the frog's afraid. He's like, dude, you're just going to sting me, right? But the scorpion's like, I know, I know, bro. But if I stung you, we would both sink and then we would therefore both drown, right? So the frog's like, all right, I guess that's right. So I'll help you out. I'll give you a ride. So they're halfway across the river and the scorpion goes up and he pops stings them and then you know the, the frog's like bro now we're both going to die like what what was the point of it and then when he asks the scorpion's like no it's my nature it's it's who i am right it's it doesn't matter the scenario i will be what i'm meant to be um and uh, it's just uh this is a story that was first seen really you're looking at like early 20th century uh russian literature where this uh, originated from uh, but it's just an awesome story. So you know, when people, you see a lot of memes now that say, you know, people show you who they are, believe them, right? Yo. The nature of the creature, right? High-end education. Ooh. Now he said he said all his bar all my bars are hard like solid gold bullion right that's like think of a gold brick if you would um, it's you know when with gold well bullion refers to physical gold or um, the silver it's like really high purity but normally it's like ingots bars uh, coins um, you know, they can sometimes be considered like what you would call legal tender. So, but there's a lot of people, I guess it's not something that you hear often, but uh, it's more likely to think of like gold bars. Studied up in Berkeley and Juilliard, all my bars is hard as solid gold bullion. My name in the Quran like the kingdom of Suleiman. You done lost mm. your mind trying to... Now, that's not Shurimah. I believe he's talking about Suleiman, right? Um, or uh, uh, kings, uh, uh, the kingdom of Solomon, if you would. But yes, his name is in the Quran. Now, religion is one of those things that I just, I don't really dive uh, really deep into, but 
again, the name Tariq is in the Quran. It technically, most people would translate it to be Morning Star, which he referenced uh, above. But instead of Suleiman, most people would know it as the Prophet uh, Solomon. And if you uh, research who the, the Prophet of Solomon is, um, it, it, uh, the Prophet Solomon, it, it, it'll lead you to, uh, you can find out who he is, right? Um, but it, it's just, it's really interesting that he's referencing this. Um, I be, believe Solomon is a, of, uh, he's a son of the prophet David, right? And David was the, the king of Israel um, and the prophet of Allah. Um, so uh, there's a whole backstory there. But yes, he's uh, basically saying his name uh, is important in the Quran. My name in the Quran, like the kingdom of Suleiman. You have lost your mind trying to call me a movie on. Ooh, that's old school. I don't know if it's as used before, but like uh, old school Italians use that. Um, what was the original reference? It was a, I think it was like eggplant, which is kind of funny because it would be like a penis now and like memes and like, uh, uh, you know, just images like text emojis or whatnot. Um, and they'd be like, yo, eggplant. That's why it's got a big ass dick. <laughs> no, no, but you know. That's uh, that's where it comes from. It's an old Italian. Uh, it's not a good word, but it's not like as bad. Um, it, it's just uh, no, it is bad. It's like a derogatory word, right? In two one five, that's his uh, his area code in uh, Philly. Yo, yo, that's some. There's some really interesting stuff. If you go back to, uh, uh, you know, everybody talks about Black Jesus and you know, and uh, where he's truly from. If you really go and in, dig into the Bible, um, but one thing that circulated a few years ago is there's uh, uh, imagery and these photos that were taken at the Vatican showing that the Pope actually uh, prays to a Black Jesus. Um, it's actually quite interesting, the story behind it. I definitely recommend you guys look into that. Uh, there's a lot of articles behind it. Um, and it's kind of funny where uh, in North America and the United States, uh, the, the image that we have of Jesus um, versus in other areas of the world or even in the Bible itself, right? Uh, you have to ask yourself, uh, who, in whose interest is it in uh, to create this version of white Jesus. When was it changed? Where did we get this image from that we use today? And was that always the case? Um, and you, you start going down a rabbit hole, um, and there's some just really good information about um, maintaining power uh, in the country, uh, in the world, if you would, and the things that have been uh, done to our reality uh, to make sure that the powers that be maintain control. You can have a whole video uh, going into this, but uh, really interesting stuff. And you know, Black Thought is just on point with the knowledge. Let's get, get back into it. Moving on. So the man. Was that Darwinism? Ooh. See, man, I just gotta love his references, right? Uh, what did he say? He said, "Bend down on the scene, uh, on on the scene, like I'm Solomon, right?" Um, so you have to know Saladin was the um, see was the sultan. He was the former sultan of Egypt, right? It's someone that you would have uh, bowed down to, um, but he could also bend down on the scene, right? Who just the wordplay with the intelligence is just such a sick combination. <laughs> Yo, the whole, the song itself, I didn't know. I was wondering how it was going to reference Aquamarine. Um, but Aquamarine is a stone, right? It's typically known as a stone of coverage. Um, you know, different, uh, there's different meanings to different stones, different gemstones. Uh, there's a variety. Uh, there's a whole science. Um, some might say a pseudoscience, right? 
um, that goes into gemology and even um, uh, the powers associated with different types of gems. Um, so aquamarine, again, it's, it's the stone of courage, um, but it's supposed to reduce stress, right? It's supposed to quiet the mind. Um, it, it's just really interesting science behind it. Or, or again, it's uh, it's definitely worth looking into. This is the natural selection. I'll bend down on the scene like I'm solid D. The stone courage of steam is aquamarine. You mask how you really feel like a Halloween. When they ask how you really feel about my machine. In the class that I'm only in. Alien. Horsepower like a Mongolian. <laughs> In Mongolian, he could also be talking about, uh, yeah, there's some Mongolian people, um, but what I re believe he's referencing is that uh, with the horsepower reference is Mongolian horses. Mongolian horses are different from uh, any other breed, right? They have a stocky build. Uh, they're relatively short, but they also have just really thick legs. They have a large head, short neck. Uh, kind of remind me of like pocket bullies. They're like the little miniature. I know my sister has one of those... Uh, um, like looks like a pit bull, but it's kind of not. Um, but anyway, these uh, Mongolian horses, um, you you use them for racing, right? Um, they're extremely fast, but it's not just their uh, speed; it's the strength, it's the endurance, it's the stamina. Um, if you're looking, you know, people always talk about, oh, boss move is I got me the Beamer, I got me the Benz, bro. You ain't got nothing compared to people who buy these type of horses. I mean, you're talking about tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to get a Mongolian horse. Um, and there's actually quite a bit of, uh, <laughs> I actually know a little bit about Mongolian horses. There's some, you know, the Mongolian people, um, they start training their kids at the age of three to ride horses. Okay, and I know that when you mount the Mongolian horse, uh, you always mount from the left side, right? They always train the horses to be approached to be approached and mounted from the left side. If you try to ride from the right side, your whole ride's going to be bad. It's going to be un uncomfortable. The horse is going to behave a different type of way. Um, but also, <clears throat> if you were ever to go to Mongolia, uh, you'll see that there's horse skulls. Um, they have these like ceremonial sites on top of hilltops. And for Mongolians, the, the horse is like a heavenly creature. It symbolizes uh, luck, uh, strength, speed. Um, but when... Uh, a horse or a loved one even might die. Uh, they go to this worship site where they're said to be closer to heaven and the sky and, you know, kind of like Native Americans and all that. But there's just uh, really interesting stuff. So it's very cool that he's uh, <laughs> just kind of shining a light on Mongolian horses because I think it's something, you know, in hip hop, it's always stereotypical rap, right? Lean with it, rock with it, lean with it. You know, and you're doing some, you know, all the, the little dances and do but it's 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 so important to reference these things that a lot of people might not have access to, right? People in the hood are worried about their next meal. They're not learning about Mongolian horses, right? It might be out of reach for them more so than a Beamer or a Mercedes or a Gucci belt. Um, but you know, one of the wisest things I heard when I was young, you know, when you try to uh, buy the the Abercrombie and the the Gucci and the Balenciaga. As uh, you know, somebody to tell you, man, if you look at somebody that actually has some money, uh, they're not wearing Balenciaga and Gucci and all these. Those are still brands that are marketed to people um, that really has them reaching, right? Uh, it really has them reaching for uh, to show that they're rich. But a really wealthy person has no need to do that. You know, you look at an Elon Musk or a Bill Gates or a Jeff Bezos, um, and you're not going to see somebody with Gucci belts and uh, Lamborghini doors and something. It's too flashy. It's uh, You don't talk about money at that point, right? Um, so, uh, you know, just something out there. It's really cool that he references things that people in the hood might not know about. Halloween when they ask how you really feel about my machine. In the class that I'm only in, alien, horsepower like a Mongolian, trying to find soul again, but my thoughts cover up the files and contaminate the console again, it's a shame, but I cannot complain, though I am not the same, my bandwidth is a canvas cut from his frame, when I present Yo. ideas naked and unashamed, his hand written in Sanskrit on a seven train. 
that's kind of funny. You reference Sanskrit. That's an ancient uh, language. It's a, considered a classical language, but it's between um, India and Hinduism. But my thoughts corrupt the files and contaminate the console again. It's a shame, but I cannot complain. The why I'm not the same. My bandwidth is a canvas cut from his frame. When I present ideas, naked and bandwidth. I don't know how he's using bandwidth there, but like in computing, right? Bandwidth is a it's like the maximum rate of data transfer uh, transfer across a given path, right? Um, so bandwidth can be, you know, I normally look at it as three different types. I look at da digital bandwidth, data bandwidth, and network bandwidth. Um, but I think he's just using it in the general sense, right? It's a canvas cut from his frame when I present ideas naked and unashamed. His hand written in Sanskrit on a seven train. On the seven, okay. Maybe the seven train in Philly. Is that like a number seven train? Sounds like in New York and Chicago, we used to have those. And we used to have uh, A, B, and the A, B stops. So a stop would, you know, train would stop at A, some would go at B, some were A, B stations where you could switch. Uh, in New York and places, I believe they have, um, like in Chicago now, we have colors. Red line, green line, blue line. Um, I don't know what it is in Philly. Uh, he could be talking about the seven line. Could be a train station somewhere east coast. Uh, just not familiar with that reference. Let me know in the comment section if you can uh, help break that one down. I got the his hand written in Sanskrit, but on the seven train. Listen to what he's saying, right? He's saying, I've been through it all. What does he say? I've been through hoodies and beepers, right? And, oh, no. What, what did he say? Let me move my... Oh, yeah. I've been through hoodies and sneakers, right? Life in the hood to beepers, right? Selling drugs or communicating with your friends. Going all the way to record features. Hustling nicks of reefer. Those are those $5 bags you can't really grab anymore, but... Uh, you can't even really find dimes anymore, right? People don't want to sell a $10 bag. Like, what are you going to be here tomorrow? Go ahead and cop you a dub or get you an ounce or something. They're going to waste my time on a dime bag. What do I look like? I'm going to make a dollar seventy-two right here with you. Fuck it with you. Face ass. But no, a Nick is a $5 bag. A weed, right? To tussle him with the Reaper. Yo, he's talking about the Grim Reaper, right? The guy with the scythe, with the hood. With the mass that represents death. So by tussling with the Reaper, though, he's done been through some shit, right? Let's run it back a little bit. Yo, oh, right there, he's going back to the opposites that he was talking about in the uh, right in the beginning of the rhyme, right? He said sensory deprivation. Uh, sen sensory deprivation is exactly what it sounds like. If you guys are a little bit younger or whatnot, I'll break it down for you. But um, it's, it's really the deliberate reduction or the removal of stimuli from uh, one or more of the senses, right? There's simple devices you can think of like a blindfold right? A blindfold, uh, a hood, uh, earmuffs, right? They can cut off sight, hearing. Um, but there's also more complex devices. When you start looking into the medical world of sensory deprivation, um, you can cut off smell, touch, taste, right? Um, think about what uh, COVID did with uh, people's uh, sense of uh, taste and smell, um, right? Uh, so it's actually kind of funny when you really start digging into alternative medicine and psychological experiments, uh, there's a lot of information that says that when the brain, when it's deprived of, you know, you would call it sens sensation at that point, right? When, when, a, when you're deprived of some sensation, the brain attempts to restore that sensation in the form of hallucinations. 
Uh, that's why it's it's really hard for someone to be in solitary confinement for an extended period of time. They start to lose their shit, right? Um, so it's just really interesting that he does that. But <coughs> listen to how he uses it. With the reaper, sensory deprivation to ultimate synesthesia. I can never say synesthesia, but uh, synesthesia is the opposite of that. Um, uh, it really is the you're blending your different senses. Um, you know, that's, that's like uh, seeing sounds and color um, or touching smells, right? Um, but it's also concepts that letters or numbers can uh, give you a perception of color. Um, there's, there's like 80 different types of it defined by science, but uh, you might hear about it a lot when someone's on the spectrum, uh, the autism spectrum. Uh, and you ever see someone that they can recall um, every date, right, or the weather on any particular day, or they can tell you the day of the week of any, you know, they can just do weird stuff, and you start getting into it with them, and you're like, well, how do you do that, or how do you memorize these large amounts of information, and they'll say something different, like, I see it as colors, and I know every red is this, and every yellow is this, and it's just something that's completely weird to us, but there is a science behind it. Uh, so again, it's, it's the opposite of sensory deprivation, uh, but just see them going to different extremes, if you would. Ooh. Yo, he's saying so much here. He said, freeing our brother's keeper from chief of another creature. Uh, Brother's Keeper, it's more of like a biblical reference, right? It's Jesus himself uh, said that whatever we do to the needy or the helpless, the oppressed, the marginalized, we do to him. So I believe his actual words were, we're our siblings keeper, right? Um, a lot of people just say, we're, I'm, I'm my brother's keeper. Um, it's, it's, a, it's about the well-being of everyone, looking out for the best interest of everyone. Um, they're just a sick... Uh, you know, he's bringing in these different references, and it's not just from the Quran, it's the biblical references, or they're scientific, and it's just all over the place with it, which is awesome. Um, and of course, right after that, he references uh, breaking and entering to the theater, the search and seizure. Um, of course, he's talking about uh, uh, the search and seizure is in the Constitution, it's the Fourth Amendment. Um, which protects people from what's deemed unreasonable, unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. But what a lot of people don't talk about, and I, I kind of dabbled in studying uh, constitutional law and political science and public law, but the Fourth Amendment, it's not a guarantee against all searches and seizures. And that's what a lot of people, how a lot of people use it. Um, it's only those that are deemed unreasonable under the law. A very important distinction there. Um, uh, just something that we could, again, do a whole video on, but let's, let's get back into it. Theater, the search and seizure is the birth of genius. Somewhere between Earth and Venus, at her convenience, even now. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Really important to know those. That's the order of the planets in the Milky Way galaxy from the distance of the sun so by him saying uh what is the worth of genius somewhere between earth and venus it's mercury wait mercury venus earth Mar yeah so venus and earth are the closest uh planets actually some consider venus uh earth's evil twin have you guys ever read about that um they're really interesting stuff but uh, venus is the planet right next to us Believers make players, haters and naysayers is buried in cake layers. I think they is layers a deep. Is a lesson. Is Bro, what a quotable that is. Look at that. I take day as a blessing and see the night as a lesson. Bro, it's just it's so deep, it doesn't need much breaking down. Um, but it's just it's it's deep. It's something that someone, an older person, would say, right? Yeah, every day's a blessing. I'm blessed to wake up. But the night as a lesson, like I'm learning from the mistakes I made during the day. It's just, it's, it's just a sick way of, 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 of writing. It's a message for me to write a confession. The Matrix, a dominatrix seeking to be served, ever patiently waiting. The Matrix, a dominatrix 
uh, seeking to be served. Like, yo, that's a dominatrix is a woman who uh, takes the dominating role in, I guess, you BDSM, right? Activities. Um, so the matrix has a desire to be served. It's really interesting. Um, let it ride. And with the demons, we deserve tricks. A dominatrix seeking to be served. Ever patiently waiting with the demons, we deserve. Better be willing to pay with every dream. That you if the vehicle should swerve, learn to lean into the curve. After yeah. know, how to, know how to work the world, right? Know how to, know how to, uh, what do they say? Make lemonade, right? He said, if the vehicle should swerve, man, learn to lean into the curve, right? You got to know how to, when you, when you whip your car and you're ri riding in the rain, you got to know how to turn it so you don't crash and die. Sick. With every dream that you deferred, if the vehicle should swerve, learn to lean, to lean into, into the, the curve. curve. After working up the nerve, almost equal in size, I walked around with the iron for any wrinkle in time. I made a piece of my mind for every nickel and dime, but never less than a five and never slept on a job. A killer trap with your squad, yet never left the garage. When you got Yo. close enough to see A killer jumped on your squad yet never left the garage. That means he was in your own home, right? Either he's doing it online, but I'm thinking about that in a literal sense, but a killer jumped on your squad yet never left the garage. Yeah, it could be saying that you got you got killers in your squad, right? People you can't trust, uh, not far. Let, run it back. I paid a piece of my mind for every nickel and dime, but never less than a five and never slept on a job. A killer trapped with your squad yet never left the garage. Woo! Yo, Black Dot always brings us. Is there another verse? I don't think so. Sick. What's he saying? Yo, yo, Black Dot always brings it, and uh, you know he can be complex as well, but not as complex as like I've been doing a lot of Aesop Rock, and it's like you never quite know the meaning. I get the meaning a lot with Black Thought. It's it's just his references that can be really hard. I know a lot of people that listen to Black Thought. I was like, man, man, I don't know what you know what do he say here, or they just kind of vibing with it, and you catch little drops of knowledge, but. I think uh, a large part of what Black Dot says is just right over the top of a lot of people. Um, but, yo, that's what we're here for, right? We're breaking down the bars. Black Dot is definitely, um, you know, definitely a fave on his channel. Um, we need to get into some more of his work. But, man, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We're breaking down a variety of different artists and really diving into their lyrics. He's a like really uh, lyrically dense artist. So, if you're trying to hear the song, I always say this is not the channel for you. We're not here just listening to music. I'm, this is my first time hearing a lot of these songs when I react and do the breakdown. Um, but we're breaking down bar for bar. So we're going back and forth and really trying to break down the, the true meaning of these songs. Uh, man, I'm glad you guys are on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys on the next video.